I'm talking about there's some saints that's walking around dead because their consciousness is dead. They don't realize that every day is an opportunity to serve him. So we live life haphazardly. Sometimes we will, sometimes we won't. Sometimes we'll be in church, sometimes we won't be in church. It's no big deal to us. Amen. Because we're walking around sleeping. Oh, thou this sleepeth. Amen. Amen. But the Lord wants to shake our consciousness, our awareness that we may understand what the will of the Lord is and to be about his, his business. Amen. We give honor to our founder today. Hallelujah. And we thank God for our junior deacon elect Smith and amen Let's see Deacon Hurts in the house thank God for him and uh, our chairman of our deacon board Deacon Brady is here and thank God thank God for our chief adjutant is in the house is the key amen I saw Elder Stewart Stiles around here somewhere and we give honor to him and we thank God for our associate pastor Norwood Amen. in the house. And uh, for the mothers that are here, Mother Amen. Smith is the chairman of our mother's board. Mother Pate is in the house. And we're continually praying for Mother Alice and... And for the senior oldest mother in our church, just normally here every week, she, Mother Buford, haven't made it yet, but I'm not counting them out. Amen. Amen. And Mother Butler, they still liable to walk in the door. Uh, they beat a whole lot of us younger people in being faithful to the household of faith. And uh, I certainly thank God for the queen of the house. Amen. <laughs> Lady T. <laughs> Praise God, my very fine wife. And we are blessed today and privileged to have the Queen Mother in the house. <laughs> Mother, First Lady Patricia Shelton, a cornerstone in Kenbridge, Virginia. And uh, we certainly thank God she had a safe flight. Amen. Amen. Got in here Friday evening and uh it's always wonderful to have her in the city and in the house amen uh, i told someone the other day i said um i feel about my mother-in-law the way my cousin john moton feels about his mother-in-law she she lived with them and even after his wife passed he still keeps and takes care of his mother-in-law and I, I just feel that close to mine amen and she's she's my mama for the rest of her life she she was at, at the restaurant the other day and she, and she was looking at her bracelet that had the birthstones of all her children i say my birthday ain't on my birthstone ain't on there she say well it's, it, it, i haven't got to the son-in-laws yet i said what are you talking about i ain't no son-in-law i'm your son <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how I feel about her and so we, we thank God that she's in the house her, her and uh, Lady, Lady T is going to be taking a road trip here in a few days and so we're praying for them uh, they're going to be driving back to Virginia and uh, Lady Styles will be on holiday that's what the London people say she'll be on holiday for about a month and a half in Virginia. Amen. And uh, I sent her away joyfully and with a smile because I promised her that if she married me, anytime she feel like she need to go and visit home, she can go. Amen. Amen. Enjoy herself and her summer. School is out. Hallelujah. And uh, I, will, I will be like the, I'd be like the little boy in the Christmas movie, I'd be home alone. 
and, and I'll be just fine. And nobody got to worry about me. I'll be gravy. Amen. I'll spend a few days down in Indy with my grandkids. A few days up in Kansas City with some of my pastoral friends. And trying to relax as much as possible. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be here in church as much as I can. <laughs> and there may be a few days I'm going to be absent. But I, I, but we are looking forward to having a wonderful summer. They won't let me work this summer. I work every summer school. But because of the budget cuts in the Ferguson, Florida School District, they won't let me work. And by them not letting me work, they took $3,000 out of my pocket. Guess who got to make that up? There you go. Y'all got it. <laughs> NJT. Hallelujah. So y'all just get ready. And give like y'all never give before. Because if I'm, if I'm hungry, I ain't going to tell you. Amen. Amen. You're going to have to hear it through the spirit. <laughs> and, you know, and God always takes care of me, so I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. Saints of the Most High God, just for a little while, I want to talk to you sporadically from Scripture. I don't know what all the Lord's going to say to us, but there's just some things in my heart that I want to talk to you about. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. And we want to look at Titus as well. And for those of you that don't know what Titus is, it is immediately following 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verses 1 through 5. And Titus chapter number one, verses one through two. And then staying in Titus chapter three, verse seven and eight. Keep your Bibles open today. 2 Timothy chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. Thou therefore endure what? Hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man has, that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for, for masteries. Yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Titus chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, and concluding with chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. You have to say amen. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. In the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Finally, chapter number three of Titus, verse number seven and eight, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of what? Eternal life. This is a faithful saying. After these things, I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful. 
Somebody help me say, be careful. Careful to do what? To maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. And the people said, lift your Bible and say, Lord Jesus. One more time. Bless us. Heal us. Deliver us. Inspire us. Teach us. And instruct us through the power of thy word. Give God praise after you take your seat. Junior Deacon, go check on Elder Style. See what's, where he is. Now, I, I want to talk to you from, from this, and I, I want to step into my old shoes. Amen. Old shoes. Because I want to go back to holiness 101. Amen. Holiness 101. Bring us back to our center so that we do not forget the reason why we are here. Uh, the two words that, that stick out in my mind from the scriptures that we, we, we have read, and I hope you keep your Bibles open and mark those scriptures in which we have read today. The two words that stick out in my mind is holiness and eternal life. Holiness and eternal life. And when I think about eternal life, I think about what he said to us in, in Titus, the uh, first chapter, in verse number two, he makes a very profound statement. He says, in the hope of eternal life, which God, comma, that cannot lie, comma, promised it promise what eternal life when did he promise it before the world began which says to me that God had it in his mind to give humanity eternal life and he promised it and had it in his mind even before the foundation of, of the world. But he understood and Paul received it through revelation in his letter to Timothy and Titus. And he says to us that if we're going to receive that eternal life, we have to confirm within our own spirit constantly and on an everyday situation that we are justified and saved by grace. And because of it, we've been made heirs of God and joined heirs with Christ. He said it's a faithful saying to the point that we that believe in God might be careful might be mindful and careful to maintain good works or to maintain a holy status to maintain a holy life amen so that we might receive what God had promised to us before the world began. So I want to talk to you from this subject. We have, saints of God, something that works. We have something that works. As a subtopic, I want to use maintaining holiness and righteous living that we may lay hold on eternal life. We're living in a very crucial time now and it's understood. Paul's writing to the church. His letter to Timothy, he says in chapter 3, 
This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves more than lovers of God. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disordinate, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. The Bible says without natural affections, truth breakers, false accusers. And he said they would be despisers of those that are good. They will become bullies to those of us that are good. The spirit of traitor, lack of loyalty, heady, high-mindedness, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God is born in the earth. It's in the world and it's in the church. And understand now that the epistles is written to the church, not to the world. These spirits that Paul is addressing to the church or to Timothy are not to street people. Glory to God. They are to members of the church of the body of Christ. What Paul was saying to Timothy is that there will come a day in the church where people will be hard to pastor because they will become lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They will become asleep and forget that I have made them a promise before the world began that if they live right I will give to them eternal life hallelujah, hallelujah. They, 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 they will forget and they will cease to have long vision and, and commence having short term vision Short term vision always looks at the now and what's in it for me now. What can I get out of it now? Short term vision do not want to suffer. Does not want to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. We will love ourselves more We'll become all of the other things that, that Paul's letter describes to Brother Timothy. The condition of the church, the, the spirit of apostasy in, in the church, amen, where will, will people will cease to call on the name of the Lord with a pure heart. Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God. You cannot call on God with a pure heart if your consciousness have been dulled and clouded with the junk and the cares of this carnal world. The Lord is calling us back to true and pure holiness hallelujah hallelujah touch somebody and tell them holiness is still right my God hallelujah 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 it's, it's, it's not about popularity it's, it's, it's not about numbers. It's, it's, it's not about who's driving the best cars or living in the best homes or who have the best money. It's always been about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. My goal is to please God so that the promise he made me before the world began will be mine hallelujah 
to, 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 to have it so, Deacon Brady, I cannot be attached to or love anything more in this life that will keep me from my ultimate goal. And that is to step out of someday this mortal flesh and step into immortality and live with Jesus in eternity. Tell somebody and tell them it's been promised to me. Hallelujah. God thought so much about eternal life when he made man and said before he made you before he formed the earth before he separated light from darkness before he made the trees and the grass and the birds of the air and the, the fish of the sea before he made the creeping things that creepeth upon the earth before he made the animals and before he made man and before he breathed breath in our bodies he made a promise in the atmosphere before the world began he promised eternal life to them that at that time he had only seen in his mind. Whoo, hallelujah. Somebody shout yes. 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 We have to return to holiness. We have to return to a holiness that works. Not this Holy Ghost that don't work. But we need to return to a Holy Ghost that works. That's able to keep us. Oh my God, that's able to heal all of our infirmities and all of our weaknesses and all of our can't help it and all the things that's in our life that is blocking us from getting to Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We have to get back to it. Holding this. And it works. Somebody say it works. His letter to Timothy said, therefore, my son, I need you to be strong. Somebody say, be strong. That's his will. His will, y'all hear me, don't talk. His will is that we be strong. His will is not that we relax in the scripture that said, you know, if any man should sin. He has an advocate with the Father. Don't, don't memorize that one. Memorize the first part of it. Then say, my brethren, I will that no man sin. Hallelujah. That's what he wants us to master. That no man sin. He wants us to master to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou have heard of me, I've taught you with many witnesses. The same commit thou, commit what I have given to you, Timothy. Give it to who? Faithful men. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. What, what, do you, what do you mean, Timothy? He says, I need you to put the gospel into a group of people who will take my word and be faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful for what purpose and to what end? To be faithful who shall be able to teach other men. You can't teach nobody if you have not yourself perfected holiness. Hallelujah. What worries me today is our educational system and who we are passing along and who we're releasing into society. It worries me because I think about years down the road when teachers that are current teachers and they retire, who shall take their place? Who, 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 who will take their place? Who will be the next superintendents? 
who will be the next uh, history teachers and math teachers when we are graduating and pushing along people that can't read? Hallelujah. People that does not have deductive reasoning. People that can't put it together. What, what the Lord is saying is that I need my word put into some folk that will take what I give them and perfect it to the point that they can turn around and teach others. Not just by word, but by example. Hallelujah. But by example. You had the right thought. Keep coming. Oh, he was okay. By, by example. That's what I need. To faithful men who is able to teach others. Thou therefore endure what? Hardness as what kind of soldier? A good soldier. A good soldier. A good soldier. Now I was looking at this and, and I thought to myself that nobody in here wants something that don't work. Amen. Who, who wants something that don't work? Amen. Who wants a washing machine that don't work? My, my wife and I used to have a washing machine that, that sounded like it was washing clothes. But when we looked in it, the agitator wasn't working. Amen. We didn't shut down the machine and say, okay, well, 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 well we just hope they still get clean. We had to buy another washing machine where it worked. Where the agitator work, where the clothes can be moved around and the dirt can come off of them. Nobody want to deal with an appliance that only works some of the time. Nobody wants a dishwasher that don't wash and clean the dishes. Nobody wants an air conditioner unit that don't give out air. <laughs> Hallelujah. So who wants a Holy Ghost? It only works sometimes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who wants a Holy Ghost that's not consistent? That has no continuity, perpetuity, that has no right character. Hallelujah. I was looking at this other thing here and I, I'm just, you know, I'm just talking. Just talking. The, the, the English alphabet that have been given to us, A through Z, there's a reason why we have to learn that. There's a reason why we have to learn how each word sounds as a long A or a short A. Or why one letter is silent in some words and not silent in other words. Or why sometimes the Y sounds like an I. There's a reason why we have to learn it because without learning and perfecting the alphabet, it's impossible for you to learn how to spell. And if you can't spell, you can't pronounce words. If you can't pronounce words, you can't speak the, the English language. There's a process we have to learn. Amen. So what make it necessary to have the Holy Ghost if we remain the same. Why, why, why make it necessary for us to go to a meeting one night and have to put our hands together and praise and glorify God until the Holy Ghost come and take control of our tongue and we speak in another language if we walk away and live our lives as though nothing ever happened. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why, why, why do that? Why be born again? And, and when you research the word back to its original language, being born again in this text simply means being born from above. So why be born from above if you still going to walk like you were born from beneath? There has to be a change. I know everybody don't like this today. There has to be a change. We have to find a way to get back to the old landmark. Hallelujah. I know we're living in a day now where everything goes, but we still have to get back 
to the way of holiness. I was talking to a preacher the other day and I told him I know in all of our churches we got things going on. Some stuff we know, some stuff we don't know, but it don't really matter if you want to know how to deal with it. It's really not difficult. Our job is not to get busy into the workings of our congregations to find out what Sister so and Su Sue is doing and what Brother George is doing, what Mary is doing. I don't need to do no investigation. My job is to stand here and tell you holiness. Hallelujah. I'm gonna preach right. I'm gonna tell you what's right to do. Hallelujah. I don't want no phone calls. I don't want no I spy. I ain't camping out at night. I ain't gonna have no binoculars. Hallelujah. I'm just gonna stand and tell you what the Lord said. Right. It's up to you to take. What God has spoken, what he said, and apply it to your life that you may be counted as a faithful man. That you may be able to teach others. The mother's board is unworthy to be on the mother's board if they are incapable of teaching younger women. They're disqualified. Being on the mother's board is not about your age. There's a whole lot of old women in the church that can never qualify to be on the mother's board. You got to have something going on to be on the mother's board. You have to have a life of graveness and soberness and soundness and faithfulness and a life full of example in order to qualify to sit there. Hallelujah. 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 Verse number. I want to go over here to 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. I'm looking at verse 24 through 27. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 through 27. You got to say I got it. Know ye not that they which run in a race run on but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may what? Obtain. 25 said and every man that striveth for the mastery is what? Tempering in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we do it to obtain an incorruptible crown. 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beat it against the air. But, but, but Paul said in his letter to the Corinthian church, but I what? Keep under my body and bring it into what? Subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We all are in a race. While I'm preaching to y'all, stay in the race and be a good soldier, I'm still in the race. I have some things I yet need to perfect. We all have things we need to forsake. But we need to do it consciously, on purpose, actively. We need to pursue and chase out of our lives everything that can stop and hinder us from our ultimate goal. And that is obtaining the promise that he gave us before the world began. And that's to get eternal life. Saints, we going to live eternal somewhere. He made us to live. The choice is whether we live eternally with the demons in hell or whether we live eternally with the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. The choice is being made every day when you wake up. You're making your own choice every day when you choose to do right or wrong Amen. holiness or no holiness every day 
when you choose to, 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 to climb in the bed where the man is not yours or a woman is not yours. Every day when we make decisions and choices, should I or shouldn't I, we are mounting up. Amen. Amen. Deeds being done in our body that would determine whether we shall receive the promise that God intended for us before the foundation of the world. Don't y'all listen to these TV preachers. Trying to tell y'all that Jesus died for you once and for all and you are saved and you shouldn't be feeling convicted and, 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 and it's all right. His grace covers you. No, it does not. Grace don't cover your sin. You know what grace covers? It covers repentance. When there is repentance and forsaking of, his grace covers it. One scripture says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How can we continue in sin that grace may abound? We can't do it. Hallelujah. We can't do it. We have to, if, if you got the spirit of conviction, praise God for that. The preachers are telling you now, why would you feeling guilty for? You know, that sin is a choice. Once you've been saved, you're saved. What, it, what that really is teaching is an underlining eternal security. Which means once saved, always saved. Once you're saved, there's nothing you can do to ever be lost. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. It's a lie from the pit of hell. The Lord said we like a dog return to his vomit. When we backslide and turn to the burglary elements of that which he had saved us and delivered us from. We like a dog that returned to his vomit. Ain't nothing like that going to heaven. Amen. We, we got to be Saved, born again, and living right, striving for the mastery of holy, the mastery of holiness. We're living in a day now where people don't want to strive for the mastery of nothing. You know what we call those people? Fly by nights. Fly by nights. Fly by nights. You don't master what you don't love. Right. I want you to hear me. If you don't love Jesus, you don't love God for real, you don't love his word for real, you won't strive for it. I overheard my wife in the conversation the other day talking about a social studies teacher, history teacher, that really don't like what he teach. Well, how are you going to master it then? How are you going to really pour out of you what's in you into your students that you don't even love? You give them the barren essentials, all just the bones. You don't get deep in there. You know, you don't really give them the richness of the text. You leave stuff out. You omit stuff because you're not into it yourself. And that's what's happening to the church. We're not all that much into God ourselves. Because the Bible said in the last days, because the love of many shall wax cold. Wax worse. Instead of operating in agape, we're operating in filio. We are part-time lovers. We part-time lovers. We love him when everything is going well and the French benefits is kicking. But when we endure in hardness, that's what the text say, endure hardness as a good soldier. When it comes to the hardness of sanctification, we abandon ship. If we don't master holiness, people that master holiness, when stuff get rough, they praise them even more. They walk with him even stronger. They be more faithful than before because they are mastering holiness. And unless you 
or a master are reaching for the mastery of holiness, you are incapable of teaching others what you're going to teach them. What you're going to teach them. When God is blessing you, honey, be faithful. Praise him. And when things get rough, come to church when you feel like it. What can you teach them? Invite them to come to church. They get here. You ain't here. They your guests. You ain't here. Why you ain't here? I'm going through. Like nobody else going through. Saints, God have given us something that works. The Holy Ghost. And it works all the time. It's available. It's power. It's attributes. It's glory. It's delivering power. It's healing power. It works all the time. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. It works all the time. Did it hurt? All the time. How do I know when it's working, Bishop? When you are put in a situation that you yourself know you can't handle and you want to explode and you want to go off and you want to get in your flesh, but the Holy Ghost kicks in and say, hold your peace. And you hold it and let the Lord fight your battle. Then the Holy Ghost is working, it's working, it's working. You won't know it's true power until you get in trouble. Lord, help us in here. I hope y'all like that. I'm just talking. Just talking. You, you won't know his, his true power until the bills come due and there's no money in the bank. You, you won't know his power until you get hungry and don't know how you're going to get your next meal. You won't know of his true power until you come to church on your last dollar with no gas in the car and God makes a way. You won't know of his healing until you're sick and he heals you. Paul said, I keep under my own body. I, I bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I preach to others and save you, I myself will be a castaway. That's what he said. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standed sure having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. You don't know, but God knows. He knows the end from the beginning. He, he knows if you are his. Lord, how do you know? How, 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 how can I know if I'm yours? He said, my sheep knoweth my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. You know the voice of the master when you are his. Let me, let me go a little further. Can I go a little further? How do I know your voice? How do I know when my mother-in-law calls the, my phone? How do I know it was her? Rather than somebody else. How do I know when my wife called me? It's her. My father. Because I have spent intimate time with them. Relationship. Talk, conversation, time, years have come to know who you are. Amen. By your voice, by your mannerisms, by your, you know, how you talk, your expressions. The Lord is saying, my sheep know my voice. How do you know his voice? Because you have been an individual that have had to have spend time with him. You don't know his voice if you ain't spent no time talking to him, him talking to you. How do you know? And I'm sad 
to say that the church is full of sanctified folk that do not know his voice. They don't, they don't know his voice. They don't know his voice. I'm telling you, there's a lot of saints that do not know the voice of the Lord. You don't know him because you've spent no time. You don't know him because you haven't allowed him to take you through experiences where he can show you and reveal to you himself. You abandon ship. You throw in the towel. You go and soak. You don't go through it. With every test, you come to know him better. With every trial, you let him take you through. You come to know him just a little bit better. You don't know him because you ain't been through nothing. You don't want to go through anything but him. Saints been in the church for years and don't know his voice. How do you know, Bishop? I don't know the voice of the Lord. Because you opened your mouth. Because you opened your mouth. When you open your mouth and speak in my presence, I'm going to know if you've been hearing God or not. But Bishop, you can't judge it. Yes, I can. I'm standing in the seat where I can judge it. I can judge whether the Lord said it or not. Bishop, the Lord told me to go and start a church. I'm going to know if the Lord said it or not. The Lord told me I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm going to know if God said it or not. First, first thing I'm going to do, will you tell me if God calls you the pastor, I'm going to ask Cricket to open up the books for me. She's the church's accountant. I want to see your tide record. I want to see your tide record, your offering record. I want to take note on, on, on how often you've been in church and in Bible class and Amen. if you've been studious, Amen. if you've been obedient, if you've been a good follower. Because if none of those things exist, God didn't speak to you. You heard another voice, but it wasn't the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God causes anybody to operate in the kingdom in a position where they touch the lives of others, you yourself have, should have received an impartation. Woo! Now come on out the clouds. I ain't talking about that mystical impartation because you know I can give an impartation when I speak a word in your life. I ain't talking about that kind of impartation. I'm talking about the impartation that Paul told Timothy. What's the impartation? Uh, Lord, he said, I want you to commit to faithful men. What, 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 what am I going to commit to them? The word that I gave to you by the mouth of God. I want you to teach them and I want you to commit to them a word that they may be able to teach other men. The impartation is you sitting still enough for me to put a word in you. Some of y'all have been receiving impartations and you don't know it because you was waiting on an altar call and, and, and a prophetic word to be spoken over you and for me to lay hands on you, you'll fall out of the spirit. <laughs> Impartation is received every Sunday. Hallelujah. I wish I had a church in here. <laughs> Impartation is given every Tuesday. Every time there is a word of God that is taught to you, there is an impartation that's being given and we miss it because we absent. We're not here. We're in line for a concert. We're in line for a visiting preacher that you like. We're in line for a prophet that comes to town. 
once a year. Amen. But 52 Sundays a year, you've had opportunity to receive impartation. The evangelist will come in to make you jump, holler, scream, and affirm what you got in your own mind about the goodness that God has for your future. And you'll come give them a lot of money. But that's not impartation. That's appealing to your emotion. And to your carnal mind, to your carnal senses. Most evangelists. But real impartation is not only a word of a blessed future. It is also a current word for your rebuke, your correction, your chastisement to make you better. <laughs> oh my God, that's a true impartation. A lot of people won't sit still for that. Amen. But that is what it's going to take for you to be one of those talking about, Lord, I just want you to use me. Lord, if you just used me these last days, you, the Lord said, I want to use you, but you ain't put nothing in you. You ain't received no impartation. You ain't got nothing in your spirit. You still haven't perfected holiness. How can I use you? I'm just giving you what the Lord gave me. <clears throat> I know them that are mine. <clears throat> and let everyone that name of the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. Run from it. Somebody help me say run. run. What you running from? What's iniquity? Run from sin. You that have been receiving, imp and I'm not trying to hurt and defend nobody. I'm trying to help. Because sometimes we get in fixes that we could have avoided. If you would have just benefited off of the importation. When I talk to the single brothers, don't you know, I was single. Yeah. I could have did a whole lot of stuff here. Amen. But I'm bound to the law of God. Amen. Why would I attach an unholy woman Amen. to the anointing that's on my life? In my spirit, I allow God to cause me to be attracted and love a woman that can only benefit my life spiritually. Amen. I'm better now than I was before I married Lady T. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm better now. And that's what the goal should be. Amen. I don't want to marry nobody that's going to take me down. Make me worse. Amen. 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 We are we are bound. Why well, get it? And, and, and because I received that impartation, I knew that when I start looking, I should look for a holy woman. Amen. 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 I looked at her family. And her mama. <laughs> Amen. Gracious woman all the time years I know. Amen. So I knew that the that, that Christian couldn't be far behind. <laughs> and she's not a yes woman. She ain't scared to talk to me. And she upset, she let me know it. Amen. Amen. When I open my mouth and say this or that and this and that about whoever, whatever, what's happening. She has the ability to say, I don't think you should do that. I think, you know, 
I would do it this way or I think about it this way. And it's helped enhance me. I didn't want to marry a fool, number one. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Look, impartation should help you make better decisions. <laughs> you single you single women the same thing. You receive enough impartation to let God bless your life. Mm -hmm. I ain't out spying nobody. I'm just going to tell you what the Lord said. In the last days, perilous times are coming. I want to, I want to, I want to, in this he says, you know, in, in 22nd verse, well, let's look at verse 21 in, in 2 Timothy, the second chapter, he says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. It started in verse number 20. He says, but in a great house, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. And some are to honor, and some are to dishonor. In, in every house is a great house. Where you live is a great house. This church is a great house. But everything in that house is not gold and silver. Some things are wood, some things are earth. Some things are to honor God. Some things are to dishonor God. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto what? Honor, sanctified, and meet for what? The master's use. And prepared unto every good work. So look at your neighbor and say, are you prepared? The only people that's prepared are those that have received an impartation have received it. Notice I said received it. I didn't say heard it. I didn't say I listened to it, Bishop. Received it is to take it in. To digest it, masticate it, assimilate it. Let it become part of your being. Your makeup. That you may live. Amen. Flee from youthful lust. But follow righteousness, faith, charity with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Join the ranks of them that call on the Lord with a pure heart. With a pure heart. I want something that works. I'm closing. I want a Holy Ghost that works. Why go to school? Why do you go to school? To learn. School is a place of, of learning. It's higher learning. It's a place of education. So why waste your taxpayers' money? And if you go to private school and your parents are paying out their pocket, why go to a place of learning education and remain ignorant. Amen. Why, why, why go to a, a, a place of learning and not take advantage of the opportunity to learn? Everybody ain't learning. For if you black in here, you just recently earned the right to read and write. Amen. Amen. It was illegal for you to learn. You had to sneak and go around the corner underground to learn. So why go and remain ignorant? I tell my students all the time, why you, I tell them, I say, why you come to school day? Go home. Use my phone. Call, 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 call your mama. Daddy, tell them to come get you. You don't want to be at school. Amen. Amen. Why come to school every, every day if you're going to be a, act a fool? 
kicked out of class, living in ISS, ALC, Alternative Learning Center. They asked me what, what my class is, ALC. What does that mean, Ms. South? Alternative Learning Center. What does that mean? You are incapable of learning in a normal environment. So do you kick out of class or put you with me? Amen. Coming to school every day. Won't miss a day either. And, and refuse to learn. Matter of fact, you think your job is hindering the learning process. Because you don't want to learn. And while you in Miss Styles class, you won't let nobody else learn. Because she's constantly have to stop to correct you. Your behavior which takes away from learning time. But we do the same thing in church. <coughs> Why come to church if, if you're going to remain ignorant? The Lord said, I have you not to be ignorant. That's what the Lord said. I want to impart. I want to teach you so you can no longer remain ignorant. I want you to have knowledge. I want you to know of the word. Why? So that you can live. So that you can have eternal life that I planned for y'all to have before the world began. Amen. Amen. You don't have to die and go to hell. On, what in this life will you love that much? Y'all hear me? Jesus. To lose your soul. What shall it profit a man if he was to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You gonna let a cigarette take you to hell? Jesus. Really? For real? You gonna let drugs take you to hell? Alcohol take you to hell? That fast woman take you to hell? Now I know for some of you brothers, that's, that's a difficult one. You know, fast women. I know. <laughs> but, but, but the Holy Ghost give you power over it. I know, I know the women have a hard time. I don't know why. They always call it tall, dark, and handsome. I think it should be tall, light, and handsome. I knew I was going to get a rise out of y'all from that one. <laughs> but I know it's difficult to overcome some of them brothers that don't know the Lord. Don't have your destiny in their hand. When I, when I married my wife, she, she, she put my destiny in her hand. Her destiny is in my hand. Yeah, it is. And my destiny is in hers. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that's what marriage is? Did it tie you so close together to your destiny is in one another's hands? Achieving love is impossible. It's impossible to achieve without placing one another's destiny in each other's hands. Did y'all know that? You can't achieve love because that means I become vulnerable to her. She becomes vulnerable to me. Amen. I'm the one that tells her, baby, you can do it. Go for it. That's what you want to do. That's your goal. Go for it. Amen. 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 She's the one that encourages me <laughs> to go higher, to push harder, to go stronger. Amen. Without that kind of encouragement from husbands and wives, I know I would have threw in a towel a long time ago. Amen. Amen. Because you're the strength of one another. Right. So make wise choices. Amen. My wife, I got this saying from her. <clears throat> she said, who you choose is the reflection of your intelligence. Right. Right. Amen. So you save, you anointed, you got the glory. Make sure that the majors you choose 
have the anointing and have the glory. <clears throat> Amen. And let me, let me add this. Nobody is strong enough to carry dead weight. I got, to, I got to get out of here now. A lot of y'all missing today. I may have some more missing next week. I'm saying that we got a chance to get right. To do it right. If we ain't saved, get saved. Get the Holy Ghost. Just do right. Do righteously. And, and the reason why I'm glad y'all here and those that choose to stay with me I try to give you the right stuff because who would want a doctor that's untrained? <clears throat> I, I'm a, I will tell you this, I'm a doctor of what I do. Amen. I've mastered what God called me to do. Amen. Amen. And I'm not letting no doctor operate on me and give me no prognosis, diagnosis, or any other kind of gnosis. That's untrained and ain't practiced medicine. Amen. I'm not going to let a lawyer defend me that haven't practiced the law. Amen. Haven't graduated from school, ain't passed the bar. Amen. I'm, letting, I'm not letting nobody build my house or build me anything. I'm not letting a contractor build me nothing that ain't never built. Until he's mastered his trade. Show me a degree. Show me something. Show me that you licensed, bonded. And a preacher that many of us are turning to today, many of us are turning to the preacher that has no character, has no honesty, has no integrity. And has no importation. Coming to church every Sunday and me just telling you smile and be happy. Write down positive things and read them on your refrigerator every day. And good things will happen. Smile and others will smile with you. It's not impartation. Did y'all hear me? It's not impartation. I know I'm preaching like this house is full. Like I got 500 folk in here. But if I could just, if I could just give it to a few of y'all now, I'd be prepared for the 500,000. I'm closing after this. You got soldiers, athletes. They all operate through the rules of their profession. I don't want nobody going to war for me that ain't been through basic training, boot camp, ain't shot no gun ever. Amen. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, you know, a president that runs a country by emotion. Start a nuclear war because he got mad. Y'all hearing me? Lord Jesus. Soldiers, athletes operate through rules of their profession. So much the soldiers, must the soldiers in the army of the Lord. We have to operate through our profession. We have to operate professionally, not raggedly. We want in our houses, our big houses I talked about, I want my house with China. Not with a bunch of mop buckets. Amen. 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 I want it full of crystal. Amen. Not full of scrub brushes. Amen. <laughs> I want great chandeliers. Amen. Not a house filled with toilets. Because you know what you do in toilets, right? Amen. We want to build God a house that shines to him. When he look in our houses, I want him to see a great house 
that brings him glory. A house full of light, not darkness. Hidden secrets. Secret sin. Glory to God. I hope I'm helping somebody. I got to go. I'm, 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 I'm closing. But this is what the Lord gave me today. And I'm just closing with Titus. He said, listen, I want you to understand in the eighth verse, this is a faithful saying. These are the things I will that thou affirm. I want you to affirm it constantly every day in your mind and in your consciousness that which they that which believe God might be careful to maintain holiness, to maintain good works. Before you do it, think about whether it pleases God or not. Many of us have a difficult time saving our household because they see you after when you ain't at church. Many of us have a hard time saving our family because they see us when we ain't here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thank God my older children are saved because if they had to get saved based upon what they've seen going on in my house, they wouldn't be saved either. Ain't none of us exempt. People, people, people don't do no more what you say. They do what they see. How you live. There's one thing about my dad I can always say. Thank God he gave me a good example. I might not agree with everything. But I thank God he gave me a good example about holiness. Never heard him cuss. Never heard him raise his voice. To this day I ain't never heard him raise his voice. Never heard him argue, fuss, and fight. Amen. Amen. There's some things I, I think he should have fussed and fought, fought about. <laughs> but, but I never heard him fuss and fight. Amen. Because he was trying to perfect this thing called holiness. Amen. And all of us should leave some kind of example to our children. To our family. We say we apostolic. That don't mean much today. Because we do everything Baptist folk do. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, we, we you know. Apostolic pastors are having children being born to their members in the congregation. Two. Amen. Amen. Apostolic pastors are being caught with other men. Amen. In the closet. Apostolic pastors. There's a lot going on in this day. But as long as there is a voice, as long as God help me, I'm going to be a voice. Amen. That can impart something into you to help us live better as long as I can hear the voice I hear my own self and I continue to perfect holiness within myself and let's, let's all get together let's all go to heaven together amen. amen stand to your feet everybody give God praise give God praise